On a very sunny day, your solar generation chart might show a perfect bell curve like this. But depending on what equipment you have, the chart might look like this instead. Essentially, your solar generation is being clipped in the middle of the day. And in this video, I'll explain why that's happening and what you can do about it. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. Now I've touched on solar clipping in some of my previous videos, but recently I've had quite a few questions, most likely because we're heading into summer in the Northern Hemisphere and clipping is more noticeable then. So I thought I'd make a dedicated video on the topic, bringing everything into one place. To get started then, let's first understand what solar clipping actually is. Here is an example solar array. It comprises 15 panels, with each panel rated at 470 watts, to give a total peak output of approximately 7 kilowatts. Now the power generated by our solar array is direct current, or DC, but the home that will use that power requires alternating current, or AC. So to convert DC into AC, we use a device called a string inverter. This inverter will have a maximum AC power rating. In this example, we'll use 5 kilowatts. Now it might seem strange to have a string inverter to have a lower AC power rating than the maximum DC input power, but this is common and it's called oversizing. And modern inverters are typically designed to handle oversizing by 150% to 200%. There's quite a lot to the topic of oversizing, which we won't have time to get into in this video. But if you want to know more, I cover everything in detail in my video here. The link is in the description. Okay, back to our example array and string inverter. If we assume the array is installed on a south-facing roof in the UK, this chart illustrates the typical daily generation profile for a sunny summer's day. You can see that the generation peaks at midday, reaching the array's maximum output of 7 kilowatts. But remember, the string inverter has a maximum AC output of 5 kilowatts. So when the generation exceeds this limit, it is automatically clipped to 5 kilowatts, resulting in the flat top that you can see in the generation profile all the generation above that is simply lost. Okay, now that we have an understanding of what solar clipping is, if your installation suffers from clipping, what can you do about it? If you suffer from clipping, the first action to take is to establish the size of the problem. If we look again at the clip generation in our example, the difference between the maximum power that the array can supply, seven kilowatts, and the power that we can actually acquire represents a 29% reduction. That sounds like quite a hit, but we should instead be comparing energy generation across the entire day, which means we need to compare the area of clipped generation, A, with the total potential energy generation, A and B. And in our example here, when we calculate that, only around 13% of the total potential generation is clipped. And if you want to see what that percentage is for your own installation, it's very easy to do. Just use this modeling utility I developed, which you can access via my Patreon. Details are at the end of the video. All you need to do is enter a few details about your own solar installation, including the location of your property, the orientation and pitch of your array. This utility allows up to four arrays, and also your inverter size. If we enter the details for our example 7.05 kilowatt peak south facing array at an undisclosed location in Oxford, UK, together with our five kilowatt inverter, you can see in the chart on the right our estimated solar generation across the day, just under 49 kilowatt hours of energy on a sunny day in July. And if we look just underneath this chart, you can also see how much additional generation we would have had if there was no clipping, just over 13%. We'll use this percentage then, or whatever your clipping percentage is for the summer months as the starting point for determining how big the problem is. By the way, if you have microinverters instead of a string inverter, you could still use this utility to model the level of clipping you'll receive. For the inverter size, simply enter the maximum continuous power rating of your microinverter multiplied by the number of microinverters that you have. All right then, let's look at four factors that could reduce your level of clipping. Firstly, it won't be sunny every day, even in summer. And on those days, because the level of generation is reduced, there might not be any clipping. We can test this in the modeling utility. I'm going to reduce the level of sunshine to see at what point the clipping stops. And for this example, I didn't have to reduce that level by very much. At 72%, which is still relatively sunny, there is no clipping. Of course, if you have a higher amount of clipping to start with, 
you'll need to reduce the sunshine level a bit more before it stops. If we take the UK where I live, even in summer, maybe only around half the days will result in an appreciable level of clipping. Secondly, it won't always be summer. And depending on where you live, your generation will be a lot less than in summer, meaning no clipping. Again, we can test this in the utility. If we set the sunshine level back to 100% and change the month, you can see which months result in no clipping. Thirdly, your solar panels will degrade over time. When new, they operate at peak efficiency, delivering 100% of their rated capacity. In our example here, that's 470 watts per panel. But over time, the panels will experience performance degradation. And depending on the make and model, after 25 years, this could reduce their efficiency to approximately 85% of their original power output. In our example, just under 400 watts. And finally, your panels may not always be clean. And of course, any dirt on your panels will reduce their production and consequently will also have an effect on the amount of clipping. So if we combine all these factors, and maybe I'll write a utility to model this a bit more scientifically, in our example here, over the whole year, I think this reduces the size of the problem from 13% to maybe something as low as 2 or 3%. So I have to ask myself, should I worry about it? Of course, if your clipping starting point is higher, you might still have a 5 to 6% problem taking all these factors into account. So let's talk about what you might be able to do about clipping. The most effective tool available to you in the fight against clipping is your home battery. But it has to be the right kind of home battery. It has to be a DC coupled battery and not an AC coupled battery. I explain the difference between these two types of battery in this video here. The link is in the description. But in summary, as you can see in this diagram, an inverter has both a DC and an AC side. A DC coupled battery is connected to the inverter on the DC side, and your battery can be charged directly from solar generation, meaning without any AC-DC conversion, as they are both DC entities. But what's really interesting is that even though your inverter might have an AC limit, it can use any solar generation above that limit to charge your home battery. Unfortunately, you're not able to do the same thing with an AC coupled battery. And that's because the AC coupled battery is connected to the inverter on the AC side and that AC limit cannot be breached. By the way, if you have a micro inverter based system, then your home battery is already AC coupled. So what I'm about to describe is not possible for you, unfortunately. Taking our example again, in the middle of the day, the array might be generating around seven kilowatts. Let's say the home requirement at that time is five kilowatts, which is the maximum AC output of the inverter. There is still two kilowatts of DC power generation available that can be used to charge the battery. So that's two kilowatts of power that would otherwise be clipped. There are two important caveats, however. One, the inverter must support this capability. And two, the home battery must not already be fully charged. This second point is really important because as soon as the battery becomes full, there is no more any place for the extra DC generation to go. So you'll be clipped once more. And you may have already seen this process happening in your generation data. It will look something like this. Initially, there is no clipping as the extra generation above the inverter AC limit is put straight into the battery on the DC side. But then as soon as the battery becomes full, the generation is clipped once more. Here's the rub though, it is just not easy to avoid your battery from becoming full on a sunny day. Looking at our example in the utility again, even if your battery, and I've programmed a Tesla Powerwall 3 here, is empty before the sun comes up, it'll be full by 10 a.m. So unable to stop clipping after that time. I mean, you can play some games like manually programming in a slower charge rate for your battery, but you need to take into account your battery size, array size, your inverter AC limit, any export limit that you have, and more importantly, what the weather is going to be like that day. A better way is to use automation to manage all these things for you. For example, Home Assistant, Predbat, or if you have a home battery that supports AI, like the SIG Energy SIG in store. Using automation like this is likely your best chance to avoid clipping, but in some locations, it's really difficult to predict the weather these days, even for the next few hours. And getting that wrong might actually cost you more money than you would have made if you'd got it right. And if you have whole home backup, I'd argue it's better to always charge your battery to full overnight every night so that you'll be able to power your home for a long time, no matter when that power outage might occur. 
These automations will instead want to keep your battery state of charge quite low, or at least low enough so that they have something to work with. I guess I'd rather prioritise home backup over the extra few percent generation that these automations might achieve over the year. You can hear more about my thoughts on using automation to avoid clipping, and also some experimentation I carried out in this video here. Again, the link is in the description. I'd love to hear from you about any automations you've used to prevent clipping. Please let me know in the comments. So we've discussed clipping for those of you who already have a solar and battery installation. But what if you're still at the planning stage? What could you do in terms of system design to avoid clipping? Having an inverter that's at least the same size as your array is a good way to go. But if your array is very large, the extra cost involved for the larger inverter might be a little prohibitive. But maybe keeping the maximum level of clipping to below 15% say is a good target, given everything we covered earlier in the video. And when you come to choosing your installer, make sure you choose wisely. Home solar is a growing market, and unfortunately some companies operate solely to take your money, disappear, and leave you with a lousy installation, with no support and no warranty. This incensed me so much that I created a UK directory of selected solar installers that I've personally vetted and I would trust with my own money. The directory is really easy to use. Just type in getreadyfor.solar into your browser and you'll join a rapidly expanding group of very happy customers. And you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Thank you. All right then, hopefully through this video, you've got a good understanding of what solar clipping is, what you can do about it if your own installation suffers from clipping, and if you're still to get solar, how you can design your system to limit or avoid clipping completely. Do you have any further insights into clipping that I haven't covered? I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Before I go then, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible, including these supporters on the higher tiers. Until next time then, thanks for watching.